Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. Today we're going to be talking about important issues happening right here in our city, including a major project that's planned for Palos Verdes Drive East. And to tell us all about this, joining me here in studio, it's great to have our Mayor Pro Tem, Jerry Dehovic. Thank Hello. you for being here. And Council Member Jim Knight. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you so us. much for coming and sharing what's going on. Um, we know the city's held some workshops about plans to resurface and improve Palos Verdes Drive East. They've had two. They're going to have their Last one, we want our, our residents to know March 13th um, at 7 p.m. at Marymount College. So mark your calendars, plan to be there to find out what's going on. But you're going to help share. You've been to a workshop. Just talk about what's what's happening at these workshops and, and sort of what the information um, is, is going out there about the project. We'll start with you, Mayor Pro Tem. Sure. Well, thank you, Liz. Um, these workshops were put on uh, in conjunction um, and in combination with the Traffic Safety Commission and the uh, Public Works Department. And specifically, we're dealing with the Palos Verdes Drive East uh, Roadway Rehabilitation Project. That's the official name of it. Um, this project deals with, with multiple uh, remediation efforts on, on Palos Verdes Drive East. Uh, we're currently in the design phase. Uh, the project is slated to, to begin work uh, early this summer and, and hopefully will be completed by the end of the year. And, um, you know, Councilman Knight and I attended uh, the second of three workshops on February 2nd. Uh, that one was attended probably by 15 or 16 residents and the, uh, the first one, my understanding, had about 30 residents and I was uh, thoroughly impressed with the, the feedback and the, the commentary and the suggestions and I know that uh, uh, staff made several notes on, on a lot of the things they brought up and obviously most of those people were from the east side of the hill and they had some very specific uh, uh, commentary and suggestions. So you found the workshop to be very helpful? And, and yes, I think it was quite helpful. And I think when the city puts on these kind of workshops, it really helps engage uh, the citizens in the, uh, the planning process the city goes through. Because sometimes projects go through, it, go, it grinds through the uh, public works, it gets done, and people don't understand what's going on. This is an important project, it's a major project, <coughs> so it's really good to have the citizens involved. And there's some really good feedback uh, on Great. this particular workshop from the people. And again, the, uh, the staff and their consultants and the Traffic Safety Commission did a great job in the presentation. They, 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 the presentation was clear. They, they broke it down to components so they can understand different sections of the road that was going to be happening. They had illustrations to show what the pr projected uh, project would look like. Uh, so it was very well presented, very clear. And, and most importantly, they did spend a good amount of time with the audience to get their feedback. And that was, I think, a really important part of the project. And, and if I may, those were the two primary goals. Number one was to inform, which they did an excellent job, and number two was to gather input from the citizenry. Right. Give us a little bit of a timeline of what the project actually involves and really why we need to be doing this in the city at this time. Sure, if I may. Start. The um, Number one, again, the timeline is early summer of this year through the end of this year. Okay. Uh, the project includes uh, fixing the road, replacing the road where need be, uh, resurfacing the other areas that don't need to be uh, completely removed and repaired, uh, repairing sidewalks, curbs, gutters, uh, guardrails, vegetation remediation, um, adding some retaining walls in certain areas, um, reconfiguring the, the geometry of certain roads as they enter Palos Verdes Drive East, um, signage, dealing with, with bike lanes and bike access, uh, and obviously restriping, and that's this is the first part. Uh, it's it's a major part of the remediation, and I also want to mention that there's a second phase uh, coming down the pipeline 24 months from now that okay. that, that deals specifically with the area between Bronco and Headland, which is a, a major point of concern with citizens in that particular area, and also trail. Uh, um, configurations and equestrian usage issues also. So, so. so the, the project starts at the PV Drive South, PV Drive East end, and then it goes how far up when you were saying all, it goes? All the way to the border. All the way to the Rolling border. Rolling Hills Estates. Okay. Mm -hmm. from, from your point of view though, how important is it? Or was, I don't know if you were just going to add something. Well, yeah, um, it, it's a very important project. That road was built by the county a long time ago that had different standards of road width, curvature of road, and so on. 
the actual road easement in some places goes through people's homes and backyards. So there's a whole lot of complexities we're being thrown into our lap now to try to resolve. And um, it's, it's beyond just fixing potholes and resurfacing and restriping. There's a lot of safety issues, as Mayor Pro Tem mentioned. Uh, certain curvatures, of, like Bronco, a very sharp curve there. Um, and we also need to address how are we going to accommodate bicycles, yeah. pedestrians, and equestrians. There's certain parts of the road that may need to be widened, even with a retaining wall, for that matter, to, to widen them out. Uh, other parts of the road, um, there already is a little bit of a side kind of walkway, but what's happening is that people are parking on there uh, off the street, it's kind of half off the street and half on this little parking area. So it's not only it's kind of dangerous to have that, but it um, interferes with the equestrian, pedestrian, bicycle use. So there's a lot of issues. It's a very complex issues we're dealing with. Uh, one of the major things we're also doing is um, uh, restriping in front of the Miralist Intermediate School because we want to make sure it's a safe, that's right. a really important safety issue. Safety coming forward, especially when you mentioned bikers, as someone that I've commuted up and down that road having kids at Mira Catalina and Miralist, and it's just, you know, there's, there's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a very popular biking route, mm -hmm. so right. that would be addressed in, in all of this. To um, Jim's point, too, they're actually creating some sidewalks right at that intersection by Miralist and, and restriping in a much more noticeable fashion. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And of course, the, the big question is how much does this cost? How is this being funded? Uh, well, specifically, it's, it's costing $2.38 million, and it's coming from the city's capital improvement uh, funds. It's been allocated and budgeted for uh, in the last cycle, actually probably the, the cycle before that. So this is uh, completely um, city dollars going to remediate the city street. Mm -hmm. And what do you see some of the biggest challenges? So I think some of the biggest challenges is uh, first um, actually creating a contiguous path for equestrians. In other words, uh, you can't just have a fragmented thing where the horse gets to a certain point and what do they do? Mm -hmm. Bicycle, uh, safety, and it's a very narrow road. So how are we going to do that? Uh, there are certain sections of the road where we're going to be adding striping for a right-hand turn, which is a safety issue for cars. But then we have to address the bicycles because they don't want to be using that uh, go off the bicycle path and use that right-hand turn to cut across to go on the road because people, it's going to cause accidents. So we need to create something that's safe for the bicyclists as well. Um, there's narrow parts of the road that need to be expanded. Um, and I mentioned the cars parking on the side. And one of the things I noticed in the plan was, especially in PV Drive East, uh, uh, down by the switchbacks, uh, they're going to be resurfacing the road there. But um, I noticed that in the bike lane, in the picture they had, previous to the project, there's some rocks in the bike lane because they've got a hillside and the rocks kind of tumble down again on there. So I, I suggested that maybe they could create a little trench to catch those rocks because that's a real safety issue. If, if you're riding a bike fast down that hill and you either hit a rock, you might fall, or if you try to avoid a rock, you can go out into the traffic. So um, I think there's certain issues like that that, uh, that they need to address. And the other thing that uh, I thought was important that came out was, was really dealing with the motorist bicyclist conflict and as Jim stated that that, that that road is very thin in multiple areas and we really need to be cognizant and I think staff and is very much looking into uh, the fact when a biker is climbing uphill they need that bike lane because they're moving slower and people need to understand that maybe on the downhill side there'll be portions where the bike lane ends and the bikes are ac actually in the middle of the street because they can keep up with traffic on the downhill slope so, you know, big thing there is we got to share the road, and I've noticed there are some of those signs. You'll see much more of those signs, but, uh, um, you know, the equestrians are an issue, but I think the bike safety, because bikers love using that, that strip of road, and uh, it, it, is a, it is a concern, and that was, you know, a lot of the commentary that came forth in the, uh, in the uh, uh, seminar that we were mm -hmm. in. You so got a lot of feedback, you said, back to that workshop. That, that last one was at Point Vicente Interpretive Center. What were suggestions that residents were making in terms of how to, to deal with the improvements and um, the project itself? Did they have ideas? Yes, they did. They had quite a few good ideas. I can't remember all of them, but uh, some people live right around the Bronco area, and they, they had real concerns of, of exiting uh, um, off from their residential area onto that street. It's a fast-moving street, and it's some blind curves. And they're trying, trying to figure out a way to, to make those, those safer intersections. Uh, just a note that, that some of the uh, issues they brought forward were, were very good issues, but they're beyond the scope of the particular project we're doing. 
So what I ask staff to do is take note of those concerns and at some point maybe we can address them down the road, but the, but the project itself sometimes can't encompass all the concerns that are raised from the residents at the meeting. And again, there is a, a large um, project 24 months out that we're receiving some grant funds. Uh, I believe that we also have to match that that are gonna deal more specifically with trail issues uh, between Bronco and Headland, which is a big you know, horse area and, and, and people were very concerned about that. Jim also mentioned earlier that the actual curb and the sidewalk is asphalt and it looks like part of the street. So there may be some delineation. Someone talked about coloring or striping or changing the face to so people know that that's not street parking, that that's actually a sidewalk and a thoroughfare for, mm -hmm. for pedestrians. I thought that was a very good mm -hmm. suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, like Jim said, there were several suggestions that, uh, um, you know, although they were nice to hear that just weren't, uh, weren't going to make it to the, the drawing. In this particular uh, project. Right. Yeah. And of course, these workshops are being hosted by the Public Works team, but also the, tr the Traffic Commission. Mm -hmm. So they've been really helpful in gathering information to kind of figure out, is that how that all played out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they actually um, were, were integral in the, in the presentation. They actually ran the presentation. They, there were four Traffic Safety Committee, uh, traffic, traffic Safety Commission members there and they each took a segment and brought their expertise to the table and it did, were very blended very well with Nicole and the consultant in terms of you mm -hmm. know going back and forth and making sure there was information was brought out. So then, go ahead. No, go ahead. And I was going to say that we actually had someone there who was dealing with the construction. Chuck, I don't remember his last name, mm -hmm. but he actually got into the nuts and bolts of here's how we're going to construct this thing, and that was very yeah. He's a nice cons consultant. Have, yeah, mm -hmm. nice to have on hand. Right, right. definitely. Yeah. So good. I want to remind our residents and and anyone in the community to come to Marymount College. It'll be on March 13th at 7 p.m. Anything, as we move on to some other issues in the city, that you might want to address about the PV Drive East project that I'm not picking up and you want to emphasize? One thing, there is a lot of information on the website. Right. Um, you know, there, there's the actual map. It's in two phases. They have the nice maps at, at the actual um, function, but it's on the website. There's a frequently asked questions on there. Um, staff has offered to accept phone calls and emails with specific questions and suggestions, so I think that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of information out there if you want to become informed, and we're always happy to, to listen to people's suggestions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. that's palaceverdes.com slash rpv. We'll keep reminding them, and it mm -hmm. is a great website to find about everything going on in the city. So then I guess we'll move on. Um, this is the New Year's hit 2013. I'm interested to knowing as council members what you see as some of the more pressi pressing issues right now is that RPV might be dealing with that you're dealing with on council. Well, I think, um, you know, for me personally, I think being a council member, and I think my colleagues would agree that, that public safety uh, and infrastructure are paramount. Those are probably the, the two main driving factors. Uh, as far as public safety goes, you know, we, we've, I think we've done a good job in the appropriate funding levels for crime prevention and uh, working with Neighborhood Watch and really bringing those numbers down, so we want to stay focused on that. Um, also, dealing with safety, again, we just talked about it, Palos Verdes Drive East, there's a major safety issue and component to that. Not only um, the, the infrastructure side about rehabilitating the street, but there's, you know, there's major safety issues there that we have to deal with. Um, as far as infrastructure goes, San Ramon Canyon, as you know, that's always been a hot one for us. We're uh, in bid phase right now, we should be uh, hopefully selecting a contractor in, in the not too distant future and starting construction with my understanding is the next 60 days. Uh, we have to deal with how we're going to fund that project. We still haven't decided if we're going to get into some debt financing or not. We have some, some decisions to make there. Um, you know, for me personally, Portuguese Bend, that's something that we've addressed in, in a couple different uh, scenarios, but I really do think we need to come up with a long-term global plan, be it 5, 10, 20 years down the road. I really think we need to, you know, spending 800000 to a million dollars a year fixing PV Drive South bothers me, and I think we need to, you know, the fact that someone that says... darn bumpy road. Yeah, we, we can't change it or it is what it is. I don't necessarily subscribe to that, so I think that, I'm, you know, I'm going to press to look at that. And the other main issue as far as infrastructure goes for me is the storm drains. Um, it's my understanding that we have yet to complete uh, a, a complete analysis of every storm drain and really find out where we are and what the situation is and what needs to be remediated and what those safety issues are. So for me, those are probably the, the, uh, the highest issues projects. for me. 
How about for you, um, Council Member? Well, you pretty much covered it, Jerry. So you're no. on the same page. We're on the same page. But I, I guess there's a few additional things. I sure. agree with him. And San Ramon is definitely, I'm on the subcommittee on that. That's, that's definitely a high pr priority. We've really got to a point now where we can go out to bid on that, and that's got to happen soon. Um, I like to make sure we find a resolution to the Marymount project. That seems to kind of fluctuate and go back and forth, and residents are not happy with it, and it just seems to be kind of in this uh, ongoing process. So I like to find a resolution to that. We have some issues dealing with the Southern California Edison in terms of the reliability of our power and the safety uh, because uh, some of their infrastructure is causing fires in the Portuguese Bend area, and we've seen several recently some very damaging fires. And I've been working, I've actually met with the PUC uh, individually, uh, each member, and tried to press with them for the Southern California Edison to do something about this within their uh, rate requests. Um, we mentioned the storm drain. Um, I, I want to continue to evaluate the efficiency and the efficacy of our city in terms of how it's organized, uh, in terms of our employees and outreach to, to citizens. I want to make sure we, we might maximize that as much as we can. And uh, I'm also an advocate for trying to find a, a forum and a conduit of information for our businesses. Um, there's a slew of resources out there that can help them um, and also streamline our permitting process and make sure that we're business friendly in our city. Right. Um, um, we have a whole corridor in Western Avenue that we may be going through. We're going to be going through a um, project for that, an update of that. But I also want to, I want to, I was trying to find a forum which we can give them these resources that I have found out about all around the different cities that are providing these resources and try and consolidate them into a spot where they can really help the businesses uh, uh, with, their, with their operations. And the other thing uh, that we do deal with in this, in the Hill is the airport, aircraft noise. And uh, Susan and I, uh, Mayor, Mayor Brooks and I, have gone down to the uh, control that's down in San Diego and sp spoken to the, um, the head person down there, made a good contact, and uh, I think we've been able to try to get these planes directed offshore, right. coming right over our, our area. And also I've been on top of trying to deal with the helicopter noise, which uh, can affect some of our communities in the area. Liz, I have one more that I forgot to mention, if I may. And you're all, absolutely. Yeah. That, and I think it's labor relations. This is the first time that the city has had to deal with a union, and uh, we've been working diligently on that. And I think that it's, it's paramount and incumbent upon this council to get it right from the onset, not only for us, but for future councils and for the citizenry moving forward. I think that's a, a pretty big deal. So you're yeah. working towards the memorandum of understanding you're getting there? That's right. We're, in We're progress, working on in it. Progress, Good. Yeah. Good. Well, the, on the you have a great staff. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. We have, but I'm biased. <laughs> we really have a great staff. You're right. <clears throat> One more thing on the safety issue. I've talked to the captain, Captain Bolin, <clears throat> and he's very much an advocate of com community outreach. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's really, really important to, to have the community outreach and to not only have the sheriffs introduce themselves and they know who they are, we talk about issues in the community, so I'm, I'm a strong advocate of that as well. Right. I know just today, cause I, I'm a, obviously yeah, we all have our neighborhood watch groups. Well, a lot of times, right. most of the neighborhoods have them, and I'm in Seaview. I received today, like, the latest bulletin, as I always get, and it was about the fact about um, in terms of neighborhood watch and just being alert. Even though we saw, like, crime drop last year, there was a spike in January that, mm -hmm. you know, who knows for what rhyme or reason, but again, from them, neighborhood watch group saying, you know, we saw it drop because we're being diligent, do what you can to secure mm -hmm. your home, pay attention to what's going on in your neighborhood, it really makes a difference. But I, I also want to see the sheriffs go out to the community right. organizations and, and interface with them, talk to mm -hmm. them, give them tips, and get some feedback for what they think they could help their community, so right. I'm an advocate of that. We're one of the safest places to be, right? Yeah. And let's keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, since you both have been on the council this past year, what do you feel like so far, you know, some of the accomplishments that you personally have been able to really work on you feel good about? Um, you know, Liz, I'm, I hopefully don't sound boastful, but I'm pretty proud of my entire body of work so far. I think that uh, I've been dedicated to the process, and I think that I've, I've focused on what my goals were during the election. Um, you know, the fact that we have uh, citizen outreach and that we're an ear for the citizens, my home phone number, my cell phone number, <laughs> my home address uh, are all on the website and people do use that. Um, specifically, you know, um, as far as projects goes, um, I'm very proud of, of working with a large number of individuals when we were dealing with the rules of procedure. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there was a significant amount of input there and a lot of what we brought forward was adopted in the, in the ultimate final document. 
Uh, one of the specifics I brought forward was the study session format along with the future agenda mm -hmm. items, and that seems to be working very well in that you know, ensures uh, that all voices are heard and all ideas are at least vetted out and, and get a public um, redress, if you will. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm also very proud of, I mentioned the uh, labor negotiations, <coughs> uh, dealing with the MOU, otherwise known as a collective bargaining agreement. We don't have one in place, never have one in place, so it's somewhat of a learning exercise, but again, I think we really do need to get that right. Um, a lot of behind the scenes things that people don't see that are um, that we have to work on. For example, uh, you know, the Mayor Brooks and I are working on the matrix report along with staff, and there's a lot of work that goes into that. And I think that, uh, you know, personally, I think I bring something to the table there, and I'm proud of that work. Um, and One, so our viewers know matrix report is looking at staffing needs for the city basically performance evaluation and yeah. staffing etc so that'll be forthcoming it's mm -hmm. taken a little longer than we wanted but it's it should be hopefully <laughs> done in the next 30 to 60 days uh, one thing that i'm particularly proud of is uh, suggesting a temporary dog park when we were looking at the dog park skate park issue and I'm, I'm very happy that the council voted to bring that in because that has met with nothing but rave reviews Rancho um, Caninos Park is loved by <laughs> dogs and owners. And, and, <laughs> and hats off to the council and staff. They've made that a first-class dog park. It's a little on the smaller side, but, you know, I'll, I'll put that up against any dog park, and we've got nothing but, but uh, great compliments with respect to that. And, again, just some of the smaller issues in dealing with, with citizens that they call up. And, you know, there was one particular issue here on La Colina, the neighborhood. They had a sign there that bothered them. We got regular emails. And just a simple suggestion of moving that sign 100 yards down the road an entire neighborhood, you, the number of emails that I received on that for that minor suggestion, that's very gratifying. I'm proud of that. Uh, dealing with cell phones, um, cell phone tower equipment specifically. There, there are citizens that call up and say, hey, this, you know, I have this box now in my, my view and my line of sight. Is there something we can do about that? And I've actually gone out, drove around, made suggestions to staff, and staff has been very receptive, Nicole Jules. Um, and I think we're going to do some positive things on that front. So. Not only the big things, but, but the small things and really working with the citizens. I'm very, very proud of that. And you're doing all this while you have your own full-time job and a family, and it's a lot. I think Two young kids, remodeling a house. Yeah, <laughs> our residents forget that you know, you're all incredible in terms of the amount of time and service you give to the community, yeah. and we appreciate that. Now, um, can you top that list? No, I'm kidding, you know, talking about some of the <laughs> things that, issues that you've things. dealt with that you're really excited that, you know, I know, be, you know before this you were on planning commission and you've been involved with the community for a long time as well in terms of trying to make things happen here. But anything in particular in the last year that you've been really excited to see go forward? Well, one of the things was the San Ramon project. I mean, I really worked hard on that, tried to get that forward. Um, and, and just in terms of my enjoyment working uh, on the council, what I enjoy about it is, is working as a team. I, I like working with fellow council members and staff and the residents. And, and that, that meshing together of all those elements to come up with a process by which we can make the city a better place to live is, is a great enjoyment. I, I really enjoy doing that. Um, and especially from the residents because we really have some very talented, knowledgeable residents out there that have great suggestions. And it's that collaboration of all those elements together that, uh, that I great, get great joy of finding resolutions to issues and going forth uh, uh, with the city. I'm quite proud that uh, we uh, have a balanced budget and didn't have to cut a lot of services to, to our residents. And other cities don't have that luxury. And uh, so I'm proud that we really worked hard on that budget to, to get together and, and not uh, cut off any services. So fiscally, this city's in a good place. I'd, I'd say would, yes. But with big yes. projects, you have yes. to also be, yeah. Yeah, be you, cautious. There are, there are a lot of unfunded large projects that we may have to address somewhere down the line, but we, we are by far in a much better financial situation than most. Okay. Now we can talk about parties. No. <laughs> the, fun, the fun stuff. A <laughs> couple of things I want to remind our residents out there is that we've got Whale of a Day coming up, mm -hmm. which is March 2nd. It's the first Saturday always of the month celebrating the whale migration. You gentlemen will be there, of course. Mm -hmm. And that's, an, I mean, the, go, having this event at Port Vicente Interpretive Center, the, one of the jewels of the community, um, it's a very special day. I can tell you. Uh, and you always see whales. You see whales. <laughs> um, I bring, have brought my two daughters for a number of years, and we bring their friends, and it's a great family atmosphere. Um, you know, the booths are great. You see a lot of your neighbors, and it is just really, really uh, something to behold. And, and it brings that small town feel to what is, in reality, a very large city, both in geography and, and mm -hmm. population. 
And it's been a banner year for spotting whales out there. Yes. Uh, numbers are up, which is really good. And there's no better place to, to check it out from right there in the That's patio right. of the mm -hmm. PVIC. But then, of course, I was saying party because coming up is the city's 40th um, anniversary since the city incorporated. A lot of excitement. I know that the council is talking about working with staff to have some celebrations the community can enjoy. But I'm curious what you think is important that you want residents to know about, the, that, that they should know about the history of this city. What you know, comes to mind in terms of what residents should understand about the city's founding. Well, if you mind, I'll, I can start. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th I think we move, all move to the city for a reason. And I think it's because it's a beautiful place to live. It has a semi-rural feel to it, a lot of open space, beautiful coastlines. And that would not be that way if it weren't for these founding individuals who, who took it, the control from the county, which had a completely different plan for this coastline would have had condominiums projects all up and down the coastline. And they wanted to preserve what with the beauty that we had here. And they spent a lot of time and effort and a lot of personal sacrifice in terms of their families and their time and energy and money uh, to fight to incorporate us to, so we have local regional control mm -hmm. over where we live. And, and I always appreciate that. Uh, even the general plan that they came up with at the time was a vision that we still hold today. I was on the Planning Commission and we wanted to update the general plan. Many of those goals are the same goals we have today. Uh, and it, it wasn't an easy battle. Uh, at the time they were trying to form, um, the, the way the rules were is the person who owned the most land was a, were, had the most votes to, to count as to whether we would incorporate. And that was the Palace Bridge Land Corporation, which wanted to see more of the county vision of development along the coast. Uh, and they took that fight all the way to the California Supreme Court. And they changed the rules by which cities are formed so it's one person, one vote to form the corporation. And that was a turning point for the city. Mm -hmm. And they, it was their efforts. Dragging a court case all the way to the Supreme Court is not easy. Right. And Gordon Curtis, by the way, is one of the main, main players in that. And uh, interestingly enough, I, I happen to be living in Gordon Curtis's house. Wow. Right. <laughs> You're the go-to guy to find out about the history of that. Yeah. We, so it was, it was their dedication, it was, and it, was, it wasn't an easy battle. And I, I have kudos for the people that stuck it out and, and made it because we have a beautiful place to live as a result. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to uh, yeah, this? It's a very special time. Definitely. I would concur 100% with everything Jim said. And, and, uh, you know, I truly believe that we live in one of the finest cities in this country. And uh, uh, that didn't happen by accident. That came on the backs of many, many people and the efforts of a lot of people, not only the founders, but, you know, past councils, past mayors, mm -hmm. past commissions, committees, uh, citizen committees. There's, you know, you go back and look at all these different uh, groups that somehow played a part in, in getting us to where we are. It really is amazing, and, and those people are to be commended and congratulated and, and uh, remembered, you know, so going back the 40 years. And, mm -hmm. you know, my final thought there is I, I would encourage everyone uh, to be proud of this city. I think most people are, to enjoy the city. The amenities that we have are bar none from the trails to the coastline and Trump, Terranea, just, you know, the parks. You know, we've got 16 parks in this city all the youth leagues, et cetera, et cetera. So get out there, get involved. I would encourage you to get involved. We, you know, I, I, it's amazing how many people do want to get involved and how many good qualified people we have to turn away uh, from the committees and commission selection process. But, uh, you know, for me, I hit that, that road and it says, welcome to Rancho Palos Verdes. And I truly feel that, you know, I'm on vacation every time I pass that sign. <laughs> I do. This is and paradise. It yeah. really yeah. is. Yeah. She says. says this is paradise. Let's keep it paradise. I agree, but that didn't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. It happened on the backs of a lot of mm -hmm. fine citizens. Well, and you get to keep the vision and dream going for us. And Matt, we're all out of time here. So I want to thank you both for being here. I want to have you back. Again, reminding our residents to go to that workshop coming up um, about PV Drive East Roadway, Roadway Project. It's going to be on March 13th at 7 p.m. at Marymount College. Thank you for spending so much time and we've Thank enjoyed you, Liz. talking Thank to you. Thank you for having Council us. Council yeah. Member Jim Knight, Mayor Pro Tem Jerry Dehovic. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching our PV City Talk. See you next time.